Over the past couple of years, I've been asked by my subscribers how I keep my franchise modes so much fun for myself. So in this video, I'll be breaking down how you can keep your Madden 23 franchises fun, interesting, and engaging over a multi-season span without getting burnt out. I recognize that people enjoy playing franchise mode in different ways, so today we're going to go over how to have fun in a realistic franchise, an unrealistic franchise, and a sim-style franchise. Before you start your franchise, you have to pick a team, and obviously this is a very important part. You can never go wrong with picking your favorite team. If you want to dig deeper into these rosters, you can try to figure out a team who's rebuilding and doesn't have a franchise quarterback yet. Or maybe you want to choose a bad team who does have a quarterback already established. Maybe you want to choose a middle-of-the-pack team who isn't bad, but also isn't good enough to be a legitimate Super Bowl contender. Or maybe you want to be one of the best teams in the league and have an opportunity at winning the Super Bowl year in and year out. I think viewing your franchise as your own little universe is a good way to keep it fun, whether you choose a realistic styled franchise, an unrealistic styled franchise, or more of a sim styled franchise. So we're going to start with talking about the realistic styled franchises. This is how I have the most fun on franchise mode, so I think it'll be the easiest for me to talk about. We're going to use the Jaguars here as our experiment team. So the first step of a realistic franchise is understanding your roster, being able to determine what areas your team is good in and what areas your team is not good in. With the Jaguars, they have a great young quarterback in Trevor Lawrence. The running back situation looks pretty good. Maybe they want to get younger receiver. Maybe they want to improve on the offensive line. And I think understanding your defense, particularly your defensive scheme, is very important. The Jaguars, for example, run a 3-4, so being able to keep your players in a 3-4 personnel is important. When running a 3-4 scheme, you have a nose tackle who's really good at stopping the run, two big defensive ends who are solid against the run and the pass, and then your two outside linebackers are mainly supposed to be pass rushers. Let's look at the number one overall pick, Trayvon Walker, who is a 3-4 outside linebacker for the Jaguars. He is a pass rusher, and you can determine that by his scheme fit. He's also a highly rated run stopper as well. So if you have a linebacker who has better pass rush ratings than coverage ratings, they're probably a 3-4 outside linebacker. The same can be said here with Josh Allen as well. He's more of a pass rushing linebacker than a cover linebacker. If your linebacker is better in coverage, they're either more of a 4-3 outside linebacker, or you might just want to put them inside. With the Jaguars here, they have Foye Luakun, Devin Lloyd, and Chad Muma, all of whom are better in coverage than as pass rushers, which is why they are 3-4 inside linebackers in this scheme. Also, understanding nickel and dime packages as well. You don't need to completely understand the scheme, but just the basic stuff like that, I think is important to be able to maximize the players you have on your roster. Since you're probably not going to be getting superstars every three weeks if you're doing a realistic franchise, you really need to focus on the development of your young players. Looking at the Jacksonville Jaguars in specific, they've had a lot of high draft picks over the years and a lot of fun, young, talented players on the roster. Obviously, the big one here is quarterback Trevor Lawrence. He does have superstar development, so he'll be a little bit easier to develop. Other players like Travis Etienne and Trayvon Walker were first-round picks. They both have good development traits, meaning it'll be easier to progress them naturally. I think focusing on some of the other younger players who may not have a great dev trait, like Tyson Campbell, Devin Lloyd, guys like that, Caleb on Chason. It's going to be harder to naturally get those guys better, so really focusing on their development is going to be good. Putting your young players as your focus players while training is a really good idea. Whether you want to progress your really good young players like Trevor Lawrence or maybe the guys who don't have the high dev traits like Lloyd and Campbell. This way you'll be able to get skill points faster, you'll be able to upgrade your players quicker, and ultimately their peaks are going to be better and they're going to regress slower than other players if they become really, really good. So now let's talk about these scenarios because these can actually be really beneficial. This wide receiver mentor thing shows Marvin Jones trying to mentor LaVisca Chanel. This way, LaVisca Chanel can get certain attribute boosts. Here he gets a little bit into catching traffic. Keep an eye on the player tags, not just mentor tags, but other ones as well. That way you'll be able to determine maybe who's on the trade block, which rookies are starting ahead of veterans, etc. 
In this scenario, we're talking to the media about how Josh Allen's been a standout at training camp. Chances are you're going to get an opportunity to upgrade one of his attribute points. I chose play recognition. Try to use those strategically and focus on the attributes that you really care about. If you're really focused on Josh Allen's tackling, then you can get that up in that scenario as well. These scenarios are designed to get your players more XP or get them higher in certain attributes. So using these scenarios is actually really beneficial and they can get your players quite a bit better. Let's talk about gameplay now because it can be pretty hard to find good gameplay sliders. Before you hop into a game, you got to make sure you go into settings and pick the specific game settings that you like. One of the most important ones is quarter length. Try to find a good number that gives you a enough time in the game that you're happy with. Personally, I enjoy playing on 10 minute quarters. You have to find a difficulty for yourself as well, along with a game style. If you want a realistic styled game, simulation is probably the way to go, but obviously you can pick whatever you want. And then for skill level, I'd say keep practicing, keep looking to get better. Try not to do something that's too easy or too hard, however. If you're not good enough for all Madden, don't be afraid to go on to one of the lower difficulties. And the same with Rookie. If you're too good, don't be afraid to move up as well and give yourself more of a challenge. The gameplay sliders as well are important. I think a good mindset to have with sliders is to try to be flexible and always look to change them. If you notice, for example, the CPU caught four interceptions in a game, maybe you're going to want to move that down going into your next game. I think researching what types of sliders people use can be good for some people. Personally, I don't like to do that for myself. I play differently than other people. However, I think it can be beneficial for some. So if there are certain sliders you want to research, I know there are people who are really good at finding certain slider sets for certain difficulties. In my Tennessee Titans franchise that I have here on YouTube, I've really messed around with the sliders a lot. Obviously, the game has only been out for a few days, so these are far from polished. But I am tweaking them based on how I'm playing. For example, in the first game of the season, Daniel Jones threw four interceptions. So I moved our interception slider down. That way it would be harder for us to get interceptions on defense. Finding a good slider set is really important because it can make your franchise modes so much more fun. You want a slider set that you enjoy, that you have fun playing, and you're always looking forward to playing your next game whenever you get time. However, on the flip side, you don't want something that's too easy, and you don't want something that's too hard. You want something that can be a reasonable challenge for you, but you're also not losing every game 50 to nothing because eventually you're going to get bored, you're going to get frustrated, and that's not going to be any fun. If you can continue to polish your sliders and get competitive games week in and week out, then I think it will really enhance your franchise experience. I think one of the hardest parts of maintaining a realistic franchise is trading. Because obviously when you make trades, you want to help your own team. But if you want to keep it realistic and not exploit the game and fleece teams super often, this is sort of how you can make your trades fair for all sides. So let's look at this trade with Daxton Hill, who the Bengals just picked in the first round. I'm offering a backup receiver, a backup quarterback, and a fourth round pick, and it's in the green. All I have to do is probably turn that into a third rounder, and it gets accepted. But I always ask myself, would the other team do this? The Bengals probably wouldn't do this. Even though they have Jesse Bates, Dax Hill is a really versatile defensive back. He's going to be a big part of your future. I don't think a third round pick, along with a couple of backups, really threads the needle. Look for players on teams who have an actual reason of getting traded. The Bengals have no reason to trade Daxton Hill right now. Terrell Burgess on the Rams is a good example of the player you could look to target. He's their backup strong safety. He doesn't really get a lot of playing time, and the Rams have a lot of depth at safety. He's not a guy they really need. I think Walker Little in a fifth round pick is pretty fair. The Rams are looking for young offensive linemen, and you're looking for a young safety. So it's a win-win deal for both sides. You're helping your own team, but there's also reason for the other team to do it. And now you're getting a really good young player in Terrell Burgess, who really isn't that much worse than Daxton Hill. But this way, you're making a fair trade that helps yourself, but you're also not exploiting the game. Another important aspect of team building is understanding how the salary cap works. You want to be able to have enough money to spend on free agents. So understanding how this works can be important. The Jaguars have spent a lot of money the past couple of seasons on free agency. So because of that, they have some pretty bad contracts. 
Look at a guy like Cam Robinson, who's going to be making over $20 million next season. Your first thought might be that you don't want to keep him around and cut him, but you're only going to get an addition of around $3 million in cap space and a big penalty of $15 million. So you should not cut Cam Robinson here. As the contract goes along, the savings you'll get by cutting him will go up and the penalty will go down. So as Robinson gets to the end of that contract, you can cut him and get some money out of it. As we go into the offseason now, this is obviously one of the most fun parts of your franchise mode. You want to be able to add some young pieces to the team, whether it's in free agency or through the draft. If I were to cut Cam Robinson here at the end of the season, it gives us a penalty of only $10 million and it saves around 12 mil. That's probably not enough to cut your left tackle, but you're making positive money out of it. And next year, that's going to be even more money you're getting. Madden did a really good job of revamping the whole contract situation in free agency, so it's pretty easy to keep this realistic. If you want to re-sign a guy like Josh Allen who wants to stick around, you don't have to give him a player-friendly deal. You can do something neutral or maybe even try the team-friendly contract, or you can make your own custom offer. I offered the neutral deal. He accepted. Look at a guy like Evan Ingram. He's coming off a breakout season. He has superstar development. But he wants a lot of money, four years around $32 million. Maybe you're willing to pay him that amount of money per year, but not four years. Maybe try to edit the contract. I did a two-year deal, which he ultimately accepted. He's not always going to take that deal. You can fr choose to franchise tag him if you want. What about a guy like James Robinson? Maybe you're going to have to make some tough decisions and not bring him back. The Jaguars are not going to have a lot of cap space this offseason, so being smart with your re-signings is important. As we look to free agency... You'll notice the interest bar certainly is a huge indicator on where players are going to go. Players who are in the green interest for your team may be willing to take less money. As we look at our team, we have around $23 million in cap space, and we can always move that up by cutting players. Roy Robertson Harris is not that great of a starter. He saves a lot of money. Jamal Agnew as well can save quite a bit too. You may even have to cut good players. A guy like Shaquille Griffin could save you a lot of money if you let him go but you're also letting go of a really good starter and a team captain. So I don't think it would be unrealistic to go after some of these big free agents. No, Tom Brady's not playing for the Jaguars, so you probably don't want to go after a guy like him. But signing Derwin James may not be the most unrealistic thing in the world. You have a hole at safety. Derwin James is high on the interest bar for you. He's from the state of Florida, so you can offer him a player-friendly deal or a team-friendly deal and I don't think it's unrealistic. It's not like basketball where all the superstars sign with big market teams. If you're willing to offer a lot of money as a team like the Jaguars, you can get really, really good players. If you want to challenge yourself, you can choose to only go after players who are high for you in the interest bar, which restricts who you can sign. Or maybe you only go after players who aren't interested in you, meaning that they're going to ask for more money. I think making free agency realistic is a lot easier than it was in past Maddens because the only motivator prior was money. Now as we shift our attention to the draft, a feature Madden added a few years ago was the ability to download real life draft classes and use for real college football players, but you don't have to use a real draft class to be considered realistic. I do realistic franchises and I also don't use for real draft classes. However, if that is your cup of tea and you do prefer having the real players in there, you can do that. For this video, I will use for real life draft class, but obviously as I said, you don't have to. As you hop into the draft, you know you always have the ability to move up or down. Again, with trading, my key is if the other team would do it and there's rationale behind it, then it's a fair deal. As you're making your selection, the two things you really have to focus on are value and need. You want to draft a player who you feel is appropriate value for this range in the draft and also can fill a hole on your roster. Here I ended up picking Keely Ringo, the cornerback out of Georgia, but there are a ton of different players you could have gone with here for the Jaguars, maybe one of the wide receivers, maybe add to the offensive line. There are a bunch of different routes you could have gone with, and really all of those guys in that early range wouldn't have been bad picks. I think as you continue to go along throughout your franchises, don't be afraid to make it your own. Maybe you're using a real-life draft class, and you want to, you know, edit it a little bit. I think that's totally fine. For my franchises, I use my own made custom draft classes. That way, these players can have their own personalities, their own storylines, so you can give them cool names, make them look super swagged out with equipment, and just have fun. The number one goal of this is to have fun. Eventually, as you go forward, you'll hopefully make and win the Super Bowl, 
while being able to keep it as a realistic styled rebuild, continuing to make trades fair for both sides, understanding how the salary cap works and understanding how roster personnel works as well are all big ways of keeping your franchise realistic while fun. Making sure your gameplay sliders are how you enjoy playing Madden, as I said earlier, is also very important. And that way you can win a Super Bowl as the GM of your realistic franchise team. Once you win a Super Bowl, you have a few different options of what you can do. You can always stick around with your same team if you want to build a dynasty, continue to win multiple championships. That's always something that I have found fun. Maybe you want to stay in your current save file, but you want to use one of the worst teams in the league. Give yourself a challenge, or maybe you want to restart with the current rosters and pick a different team, or the same team. It's up to you. Let's now talk about how to have fun in a unrealistic styled franchise. For this example, we're going to use the New England Patriots. So as you go into your franchise, the number one thing here is, again, understanding your roster. I don't think this is as important as a realistic styled franchise because you're going to be more willing to make trades and big signings. So the players currently on the team may not matter as much, but still being able to understand your schemes and your personnel can be very impactful. You don't need to be a total expert with how it works, but understanding example like the 3-4 personnel, the Patriots run a 3-4 as well. Keeping your 3-4 outside linebackers as pass rushers like Matthew Judon, who's better at getting after the quarterback than going out into coverage. Also similar to a realistic styled franchise, having gameplay sliders you like is imperative. You want to have something that's fun and enjoyable to play, but also not too easy and not too hard at the same time. You got to pick a quarter length that suits you. Again, I enjoy 10 minutes, but this is subjective on a person. Whatever quarter length you enjoy, you should go with. For the gameplay style, if you want to keep the gameplay realistic, simulation's the way to go. Competitive is for those who are, I would say, good at Madden, really good on the sticks, and that's especially good for online. And then arcade is just a bunch of big plays. If you want unrealistic gameplay that's super fun, Arcade might be the way to go. Competitive is good as well. And then again, with the difficulty and the sliders, find something you like. Don't give yourself something that's too easy to where you're going to win by 50 all the time and get boring. But you also don't want to get blown out all the time because that's also not fun as well. So being able to continue to get gameplay sliders that are enjoyable, that can lead to competitive games, will make you want to play more. And ultimately, that's the big goal. As we said with the realistic franchise, the number one goal here, regardless of what style franchise you're doing, is to have fun. Making trades in an unrealistic franchise is very different than making trades in a realistic styled franchise. Here, you don't need to care about what the other teams think. Go out and make moves to help your team without worrying about if they're fair. If you want to get a young star like CeeDee Lamb without having to give up anything good, go for it. If you want to trade for a bunch of first round picks, go for it. Gut the team apart and carve your own path, draft your own players. That's a really fun way of doing a rebuild as well. If you really want to get cheesy, a good tactic here is to sign players out of free agency who are decently young and decently good. Samsung Ebukam and Anthony Brown are both good examples. They're under 30. They're borderline starting caliber players. So essentially here, I just traded 35-year-old Devin McCorda, who's probably going to retire at the end of the year, for a first-round pick. That's pretty damn good value. I would never do this in a realistic franchise because that would never happen. But if it's unrealistic and you don't care about that, then go for it. Understanding how the salary cap works is also important here, just like a realistic franchise. The only difference is you don't have to be stuck with these bad contracts. If there are deals that you don't like on the roster, just trade them away. Even if you don't get anything, you're not going to have to worry about most of the money minus some of the guarantees, I believe. So as you go into the offseason, this is really your opportunity to build your team how you wish. This free agency class is really good. There are a lot of big-name players. Lamar Jackson's especially interesting. Do you want Lamar Jackson on your team? Well, here's the thing. He would probably not make a lot of sense in New England because they have Mac Jones, and Lamar doesn't really fit the scheme. But if you're doing an unrealistic franchise and you just want to play with Lamar Jackson and keep him on your team instead of Mac Jones, who cares? Go for it. Again, I wouldn't do this if I was doing a realistic franchise with the Patriots, but if you want Lamar Jackson on your team, go for it. Even though he's not interested and it doesn't make sense, just offer him a boatload of money and maybe he'll do it. A lot of teams don't like to give out a bazillion big contracts in one offseason because that can be pretty risky, 
But here, why not? Go ahead and get guys like Derwin James and other talented starting caliber players as well. But what if you really want Terry McLaurin as well and you don't have enough money? Here's the thing. Find your bad contracts and trade them away. You can also cut them as well, but why not get something for them? I don't think most teams in real life would be interested in these big contracts like this, but if you don't care about realism, why not go and get an early second round pick for guys like Devontae Parker and Hunter Henry, who you may not care about keeping long term. This way you can go out and give a guy like Terry McLaurin an offer and add him to the offense with Lamar Jackson, C.D. Lamb, and others. You're probably not going to get everybody to accept, regardless if you do realistic or not. Derwin James here signed with the Eagles, but I was able to sign McLaurin. I was able to sign Lamar Jackson. I ended up going after Odell Beckham Jr. So you can really load up on big name players. And now this roster looks really good, but I don't need Mac Jones. So why not trade him? We just got the number one pick for Mac Jones and Ramondre Stevenson. This whole offseason has been unbelievably unrealistic, but if you just care about building your own team, why not? I just acquired five first round picks along with Lamar Jackson, CeeDee Lamb, Terry McLaurin, and others. You can look to trade away your picks for proven players like Derwin James, John Johnson, and Jeremiah Wusukoromoa, as I did for the Browns. Or you can look to draft really good players like Jamie Worrell, who ended up being one of those generational prospects. He's an 82 overall. He ended up with Superstar X Factor. Total monster. So I pretty much just turned the Patriots into a super team in just one season. I did it by trading for a bunch of draft picks, signing a bunch of free agents, and fleecing a bunch of teams for really good players. None of this would have happened like this if I wanted to keep it realistic, but if you don't care about realism and this is how you enjoy franchise mode, then this can be a lot of fun. But don't forget the basic things. Don't forget to understand your roster personnel. Jeremiah Uwusu koromo is not a 3-4 outside linebacker. He's a cover guy. Make sure to move him over to middle linebacker so he can be used to his best strengths in coverage rather than rushing the passer. Eventually, just like the realistic franchise, you're hopefully going to be good enough to make the Super Bowl and maybe even win a championship. So this is how you can have fun in an unrealistic franchise by fleecing teams, by getting draft picks, by signing a bunch of big name players. However you want to do it, you can spin your unrealistic franchises however you wish. But as long as you continue to remember the basic things, keeping the gameplay sliders fun and being able to understand your roster enough then you can really maximize your team and hopefully win a Super Bowl. From here, you can decide what to do next. Do you want to stick with your current team and become a dynasty? With this Patriots team, they'll probably be screwed money-wise because we've spent, like, all of our money. So part of your challenge could be maybe looking to stay over the salary cap. Maybe you want to switch over to one of the worst teams in the league, give yourself a new challenge, or you just want to start fresh with a totally new franchise and a totally new team. The last style of franchise we'll talk about today is a sim style franchise. For this example, we'll use the Seattle Seahawks. You can make your sim franchises realistic or unrealistic, and all the things I talked about with keeping your series as realistic or not realistic still apply to the simulation stuff. So we're not going to go over all of the trade stuff and whatnot because you can go back and check the realistic and unrealistic aspects of the video because that is still applies here. You still have to understand your roster personnel, especially here in a sim franchise because you're not really going to be controlling the players on the field. If you take a look at this Seahawks defense, their personnel is completely messed up. Uchenna Nwosu is a pass rusher. His highest archetype is a speed rusher. That's a 3-4 outside linebacker, but the Seahawks are schemed in a 4-3. If you look at their other players, Daryl Taylor and Boye Mafe at outside linebacker, they are pass rushers. If their highest archetype is a speed rusher or a power rusher, they're a 3-4 outside linebacker. Puna Ford and Shelby Harris are more of 3-4 defensive ends, and in a 4-3 scheme, they're more of defensive tackles. So because of that, I think your best move here would be to switch to a 3-4 or switch all of those guys' positions around. That way they can be utilized best in a 4-3. In this example, I'm going to move to a 3-4. you got to make sure your playbook matches up so you can't really stick with Seattle's playbook because it's a 4-3. Sticking with the theme of playbooks, in a sim franchise, your playbook is really important because that can really depend on how your team plays statistically. I think on offense, it's really easy to sort of dictate how you want your offensive flow to be. If you want more of a pass-happy offense, the best playbooks I have had success with, at least on previous Maddens, would be New Orleans, Tennessee, Chicago, the Chargers, 
the to a lesser extent the Patriots and the Chiefs however pretty much all of those teams other than Kansas City and New England have hired new coaches within the last two years so those playbooks may not be as good for a pass offense if you want a more run dominated offense the Browns playbook is a really good one and then Baltimore's is as well especially if you have a mobile quarterback then the Ravens one is probably the way to go there are multiple different types of sim franchises you can do. If you just want to sim through the season quickly, then the gameplay sliders are not going to matter. But if you like to watch the games, then the sliders are actually important. As you go into a game, you can do super sim slow mode and watch the game, CPU versus CPU, but you still see how your team plays. If that's the route you like to go, then sliders are still important. And just like if you're actually playing the game itself, you have to find a set you like. For watched games that I do, I always enjoy arcade mode, but if you prefer simulation or competitive, go at it. The sliders are also important in these watched games because they actually make an impact just like gameplay sliders. Continuing to find a slider set you like is very important so you can have competitive, fun, and exciting games just as if you're playing an actual game itself. I have a lot of experience with this as I actually run a Madden Sim League, shameless plug, link in the description if you're interested. But I think always, just like a regular gameplay, if you're willing to continue to change and adapt your sliders to make them as fun as possible, it works the exact same way with a stem-styled franchise. I know watching the games aren't everybody's cup of tea, but they can be a lot of fun, and I've noticed these Madden Watch games over the years can be pretty interesting and exciting. Eventually, you've made it all the way up to the Super Bowl. Five years later, this team has changed quite a bit so being able to do a realistic or unrealistic approach can be fun either way in a sim style franchise and i think winning a super bowl can be as rewarding as a franchise where you play the games even if you're not actually playing it can still be really fun to eventually win a championship after you've won a super bowl the choice is yours just like a regular realistic or unrealistic franchise you can choose to stick it out with your current team you can choose to rebuild one of the worst teams in the league you can choose to totally start fresh maybe you enjoyed the sim franchise but you want to start playing the games for your next one that works too so there you go we've gone over how you can have fun in a realistic styled franchise an unrealistic styled franchise and a sim styled franchise there are so many different ways to play franchise mode here on Madden 23, and not just Madden, but this applies to other sports games as well, and ultimately you can get the same rewarding feeling of winning a Super Bowl or a championship, again, depending on what sport you do. So that's going to end this video. This one took me a lot of time to make. I really hope it helped you guys out. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.